to worship him. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to just say thank you, Lord, for just for waking us up this morning. Thank you, thank you Lord. That we see another day to gather in his name and worship him. Uh -huh. Not ourselves, but him. Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And to the deacons, to Upper County Missionary Baptist Church family, and to you, Facebook Live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to say a quick. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for uh, putting us in our right mind. Thank you for the activity, use of our limbs, Father. And Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You did another miracle because you woke us up this morning. Yeah, Father, we just thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for who you are and who you are and what you are doing in each and every one of our lives today. Father, we, I just ask you to allow me to decrease and you increase, Father, and enter into this vessel, Father, and, 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 and and bring your word like never before, Father. He that have ears, let them hear what thus said the word of God. Thank you, Father. Creating me a clean heart and renewing me the right kind of spirit, Father, to bring forth your word this morning. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all our praises. And Lord, we just want to say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Matthew, the 26th chapter, 36 through the 46th verse. And I'm going to read the NIV version of it. And it reads, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called. James and John along with him and he began to be so of death stay here and keep watch with me going a little farther he fell with his face to the ground and prayed my father if it not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes. He went away the second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Yes. Rise, let us go. Here comes my Betrayal. Amen. Amen. I want to title this. You have to go through it to get to it. Amen. You got to go through it to get to it. Yes, yes, yes. 
I believe it was Jesus' darkest night of his life in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew that very soon he will be put to death. The wrath of God will be poured out on him as a substitution for us. Hallelujah. You have to understand that this was Jesus, the begotten son of God, who knew no sin and became sin for all of us. The supreme being, the all-powerful, the almighty, the all-knowing, the anointed one, yes. the Christ. The one who healed the sick, the one who raised the dead, the one who gave sight to the blind, the one who cast out demons and made the lame man walk. He come. The disciples knew what was about to happen because previously Jesus told them it was time for him to die. With everything that Jesus told them, Peter, James, and John should have taken the opportunity to pray. Everything that Jesus told Peter, James, and John, they should have taken the opportunity to watch and pray. Mm -hmm. They should have done what Jesus told them to do, to watch and pray. That's right. Christ had a good reason for asking the disciples to stay at the entrance of the garden. He needed to be alone with his father. With the disciples guarding the entrance, he could be sure that he can spend time with his father alone so he won't be interrupted. He was going to pour out his heart to his father. So he told his disciples to watch to guard him, but also to pray. He told the, his three friends, he called them friends, Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again, to watch and pray. Watch and pray. They were not only his disciples, but they were his closest friends. He didn't take all the disciples. He just took just those three men with him. They should have watched and prayed because of what Jesus warned them mm -hmm. that was about to come. Mm -hmm. He asked Peter in, in verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. But the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Yes. It will be Peter in a few moments who will grab a two-handed sword and cut off an ear of a soldier uh -huh. who was trying to arrest Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he slept when he should have been praying. Mm -hmm. It was Peter who denied Jesus three times, even though he told, even though he said to Jesus, not me, never. Why? Because he slept when he should have been praying. All right, yes. In the 22 chapter of Luke, he says the disciples fell asleep out of sorrow. Mm. They were disappointed. They were confused. They were depressed because of they, they missed the lesson mm -hmm. that they were supposed to be learning. Just for watching Jesus in the garden. What was that lesson? Wasn't it necessary? Yes. What the disciples were supposed to see and grasp in the garden of Gethsemane was the basic connection between suffering and transformation and the necessity in that process of being willing to carry tension, disappointment, and unfairness without giving it into despair, without giving it into bitterness, without giving it into retaliation, right. and desire to give back in kindness. We fall asleep out of sorrow mm -hmm. whenever we become so confused and overwhelmed by some kind of disappointment, 
that we begin to act out of hostility rather than love. We act out of paranoia rather than trust. Despair rather than hope. All right. We fall asleep out of sorrow whenever we fall short of what's greatest in us because of the bitterness of the moment. When our emotions get the best of us, right, we right, feel right. tired. Mm -hmm. That's why the disciples fell asleep. Mm -hmm. They let their emotions get the best of them. Right. They was getting ready to lose their teacher, their, their friend Jesus, who handpicked them mm -hmm. to follow him. Right. But they missed the point yeah. when he told them to watch and pray. Watch and pray. Hallelujah. It is not easy to stay awake to the lesson Jesus was trying to teach in the Garden of the Gethsemane. We have fallen asleep out of sorrow just as the disciples did. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in the garden, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as thou will. That is a prayer of resolution and resignation to the will of God. When Jesus says, if it be possible, he was not asking God if he had the power to let the cup pass from him, but he was just asking if it was possible into within the plan of God to save us sinners or redeem us sinners in another way. In another way. That's what he was asking. Mm. Jesus would stand condemned in our place. He would suffer and die and experience the wrath of God in our place. Right. Right. He would pay the price that we couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. In our place. Place. Our place. Uh -huh. Jesus was not afraid to die. He was so sorrowful that he had to be separated from his father. Mm -hmm. He suffered for us. Mm -hmm. He suffered such agony and pains for us that we are healed. Mm -hmm. This was Jesus' mission. He had to go through it mm -hmm. to get to it. Right. Uh -huh. The finish. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We also have to, the mission for our life to complete. To know your mission that God has for you. Number one, we have to believe. John 3.16 tells us that for God for lo so, loved the, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, but have everlasting life. Believing is standing on his word. Mm. Believing is starting point of the relationship of God. Believers cannot have a personal relationship with God unless they believe he loved them so much that he sacrificed his only begotten son to save them. This belief is the foundation in which your Christian life should be based upon. We should be inspired and willing to obey God's commandments. Believing is getting to know Jesus. Who is this man? Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the begotten son. Jesus, who says trust. Right. Jesus, who said that I am the bread of life. And right. if you eat of me, you shall not hungry anymore. Jesus, the living waters that you will never trust anymore. Mm -hmm. Thirst, I mean, you will never thirst anymore. We have to have a desire to seek him. And Matthew 6, 33 tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We have to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. You have to go through it to get to it. That leads me to the next point. Pray 
and persevere. Mm -hmm. Pray means to petition God for direction and persevere is to have faith and trust God while you are running the race to get to the prize which is eternal life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jude one twenty tells us, but you, dear friends, build yourself up in the mid, uh, up in, up in the most holy faith, and pray in the Holy Spirit. Our Father knows exactly what we need, right. and He will give us the wisdom and the knowledge. To have wisdom and knowledge, we have to delight ourselves in the word of God. Mm. And St. John 1 and 1 tells us, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You need to begin getting some word in you, in me. So the Holy Spirit can transform your situation and activate the kingdom of God that is within you so you can go through it so you can get to it. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Start reading the word of God. Uh -huh. If you get the more of the word of God in you, you will begin to stir up the gift that's in you. Uh -huh. Say stir it up. Stirred up the right. gift that's within you. Mm -hmm. It will awaken the God-given power that's within you. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. That's a gift from God. If you eat up the word of God and fill it with your belly with, within you, the Holy Spirit will come in and attack those issues of life mm -hmm. and hinders that hinders you to persevere. The word of God will help you go through those trials and, and, and uh, pains that affects your walk with God. God's call, you lead through unbearable pain. When we are in such pain, we need the strength of others' presence. Jesus does not complain, but he does ask for support mm -hmm. in prayer and finds strength for his mission in God alone. That's right. He didn't find it in his disciples. Mm. He found it in his father mm. alone. Mm. No matter what the pain, we must obey the mission that God has given each and every one of us. Yes. Jesus had lived in his life, lived his life in obedience to God's will. Now he chose the Father's plan over his own desire. Jesus' obedience is an example for us. And Jeremiah 29, 22 tells us, for I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Yes. Plans are for peace and well-being and plans that not to harm you and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. Expected in those are the plans that God has for us. Loving God does not always mean that we want to go through the mission that God calls us to go through. It does mean that we choose to go through it anyway. Hallelujah. Jesus now surrenders his destiny to the Father, yet even in his surrender, he remains in control. Only his own words will allow his accusers to condemn him. I didn't think y'all heard me. Mm -hmm. Yet even in his surrender, mm -hmm. he remained in control. Mm -hmm. Only his own words will allow his accusers, mm -hmm. that means the soldiers, mm -hmm. to condemn and to take him mm -hmm. to prison. Right. Jesus had to go through it mm -hmm. to get to That's it. Right. The next point is praise. Mm -hmm. Be careful not to let the enemy make you look like what you are going through. Uh, Pull yourself together and remember you are a child of God. Uh, Instead of having a pity party or what is wrong with you, you ask yourself, what is, the, what is right with you? This, this will allow you to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you. And you begin to have a praise party with yourself. When you look around, you see people, you don't even know what's going on with them because they're going through it too. 
You think you are the only one going through? No. The reason why you haven't gone crazy is because you remember the promises of God. Tell yourself and make it personal that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. God will perform a good work in me, and he is faithful to complete it. Be not weary or well-doing, I shall reap if I not faint. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, tell yourself, Tell your neighbor, joy. Joy, joy. joy will come in the morning. Yes. Yes. God promises has been proven to each and every one of us. In other words, there is nothing that we are going through that we can't find examples in the Bibles. Ask Job, who testify, who can testify that God will give you double for your trouble. Ask Isaiah, who said, Wait upon the Lord and he shall renew your strength. Ex Nehemiah would say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. You have to make it personally. Mm -hmm. You have to go through it to get to it. That's right. That's right. We have to turn our complaints into praise. We complain about everything the devil is trying to throw in our life. If you let the devil ride, he will drive. Uh, we got a habit of accepting things if, as they are. We accept the fact that we're sick. We accept the fact that we're broke. We accept everything that life throws at us. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. The power is in our praise. Praise God for what is on the other side. We can't see it. God is working behind the scene. We can't feel it. God is working behind the scene. We praise God even though we don't have the breakthrough yet. In Philippians 4 and 8, it tells us, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. In other words, praise God even though we are in, we are in it. We go through a praising. We go through it, praising God, and we come out praising God. No matter what happens, we praise God anyway. Remember, there is a reason for what we are going through. We have to go through it to get to it. Finally, surrender. Jesus said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus went through it to get to it. He said on the cross, it is finished. Continue in prayer and give thanks unto the Lord. Call on his name if you need to. Make known of his works among people. Help them remember his name and glory. Sing praises to the Lord for he has done great things. Hallelujah. Let this be known in all the earth. Nevertheless, surrender all to God. But not as I will, let it be God's will. Yes, yes. Lead the prayers in his hand, pleading honestly, persistently, yet in humility and acceptance. And you too would say, it is finished. And stand before the throne of God and hear him say, well done, that good and faithful servant. Well done. You have to go through it to get to it. Believe, pray, and persevere. Praise and then surrender. Jesus surrendered to save all of us. That was his mission. He had to take all of our beatings that was meant for us. 
He went through agony. He went through pain. But he had to go through it to get to his finish. And we all have to go through it to get to our finish. That is a race that we all have to run. If we accept the call of God, he calls us and we say, here I am. Just like Isaiah, willingly, willingly to take the call. Yes. yes, it's not going to be easy. Yes, we have to go through it. We might have to go through some horrible and terrible things. Mm -hmm. But that's part of who we are that makes us who we are. The child of the king. We are part of Jesus. He went through it. Why not us? Hallelujah. We got to go through it to get to it. To say the same thing Jesus said. It is finished. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word today, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we know that everything that your son Jesus Christ had to go through. And Father... We want to do what the disciples couldn't do, watch and pray. To continue to watch and pray. Continue to go, go through it. Continue to answer the call that you have each and every one, us, one of us to do. Because you said in your word that it is plans that you have for us. And it's not to harm us or do us, and not to, for disaster, but it is for to give us an expected end, a hope and a future and that hope and future is with you eternal life father we thank you we thank you for thinking about us in advance because you thought about it when you say in the beginning mm -hmm. you thought about it because you already know what was going to happen because you are a god that knows all and sees all father we just want to say thank you Father, we just hope that this word touch each and every one that heard this word today and hope it, it helps somebody on that journey today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. And we want to say glory, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.